Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ominde. We continue with connective tissue series and this we're, in this video we're going to discuss the um, connective tissue proper where we have cartilage and, and bone. Yeah. So these are the objectives of the study, generally just to look at cartilage and bone, what is the histological structure, what is the um, classification. So we start with cartilage. Of course, it's dense connective tissue that is specialized and it helps to bear the weight of the body. It helps with the growth of long bones in cases of endochondral ossification and also helps to support the developing organs. So as any other connective tissue, we start by saying we have cells and extracellular matrix and the matrix has ground substance and fiber. Now cartilage is covered by perichondrium. The perichondrium has two layers. The outer layer, which is called the fibrous layer, okay, and this is your perichondrium here, and the inner layer, which is usually chondrogenic, okay, so it's able to um, lay down more of the matrix of the of the cartilage, so it's chondrogenic uh, and or vascular layer. So outer fibrous and inner vascular or chondrogenic. So this is where regeneration occurs in the chondrogenic layer. The cells within the cartilage, usually we have chondroblasts in immature state and then they lay down matrix and then they rest in lacunae as chondrocytes. So as you can see these spaces are the lacunae, these vacant spaces, these are the lacunae and they contain cells so these are the chondrocytes. Okay, And these cells are usually single and spherical okay they exist singly and they're usually spherical in shape or you can find those that are this is single this is single but you can find those that are double or in two or groups of four in a d shape so they form sort of a letter um letter d you can see here when there are two they form a letter d so the ground substance is usually an amorphous gel like substance okay and it contains glyco proteins and this amorphous substance surrounds the chondrocyte. So this is the the dots are the nuclei of the chondrocytes within lacuna and the rest is a gel-like matrix, amorphous gel-like matrix. So how do you classify cartilage? You classify based on how visible are the fibers within the ground substance. How visible are the fibers within the ground substance? Hyaline and fibrocartilage contain abundant collagen fibers while elastic cartilage mainly contains elastic fibers so the collagen fibers in hyaline are invisible while in fibrocartilage the collagen form thick bundles the elastic fibers in elastic cartilage exist as branching and anastomosing fibers they branch and connect branch and connect so we start with hyaline cartilage so hyaline cartilage you find cells so you first describe the cells and the matrix then within the matrix you have ground substance and uh, fiber so the cells are in isogenous groups that's how you must say it in an exam cells are in isogenous groups in hyaline cartilage groups of two to six and then when you get the cells of course are in lacuna in all the cartilages cells are in lacuna and in higher line you find them in isogenous groups of two to six the matrix is homogeneous it's clear it's glassy those are the words you use homogeneous clear glassy matrix why does it appear clear because collagen fibers are invisible Okay, why can't we see the collagen fibers? Because the refractive index of the collagen fiber and that of the ground substance is equal. It's like clear water in a clear glass when it's full. It's not easy to tell the glass has water because the refractive index of the water and the glass is the same. So that's the same thing here. The matrix looks clear or homogeneous because the refractive index of the collagen is collagen type 2 in highland cartilage the refractive index of the collagen and that of the ground substance is the same so it looks clear highland cartilage has perichondria okay so those are the features of highland cartilage where do we find highland cartilage costal cartilages of the ribs articular cartilages in synovial joints and cartilages of the larynx specifically thyroid cricoid and arytenoid cartilages of the larynx thyroid cricoid and arytenoid we go to elastic cartilage again you start describing the cells cells are in lacunae but in this case they are not in groups okay where do we find elastic cartilage 
in the pinna of the ear you can pull your ear the pinna or the auricle okay in the epiglottis that prevents food from entering into the airway then you have the external auditory meatus the hole where sound waves enter the ear okay you have the ala of the nose the upper part of your nose it's stretchable so those are elastic fiber and in a fresh straight elastic fiber usually appears yellow and as we said you can still find elastic um, 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 so we continue sorry the elastic cartilage so cells are larger than what we saw in hyaline cells are most of the time single or in small groups not like hyaline where you have isogenous groups of two to six here most of the time they are single and in the ground substance you can see branching and anastomosing collagen fibers does elastic fiber have perichondrium yes it does have perichondrium so we see it in the pinna in the epiglottis and two cartilages of the larynx, these are corniculate and cuneiform. Remember, hyaline cartilage is found in thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid cartilages of the larynx, while elastic cartilage is found in corniculate and cuneiform cartilages of the larynx. So this is elastic fiber. Cells, single, uh, they're still in lacunae. Ground substance, uh, matrix, sorry has um, fibers, elastic fiber that are branching and anastomosing, and then perichondrium is present in elastic fibers. We go to fibrocartilage, we said it has collagen, just like hyaline, but the collagen in hyaline is type two, and the collagen in fibrocartilage is type one. The cartilage in fibro, they're dense, uh, densely packed, but in hyaline, they're invisible. Okay, so where do we find fibrocartilage? Midline structures, intervertebral discs in between your vertebra. It's at the midline. Pubic symphysis in between right and left pubic bones. And then we also have within the joints, so intraarticular discs, for example. Okay, so what are the features of fibrocartilage? We've said cells are in lacunae, like any other cartilage, but in this case, hyaline cells were in isogenous groups. Elastic cells were single, but in fibro cells are arranged in parallel rows. You can see there's a row of cells here, a row of cells here. And then collagen fibers are thick bundles of collagen. All this is collagen, thick bundles of collagen fiber. Of note, fibrocartilage does not have perichondrium. We saw perichondrium in hyaline and elastic cartilages. So what are the features of fibrocartilage? Features of fibrocartilage, we have said um, chondrocytes in parallel dense collagen thick collagen fibers and perichondrium absent okay cartilage usually do not have direct blood vessels that feed them but they feed via diffusion from adjacent tissue so they just pick up nutrients via diffusion and you need vitamins for you to process the collagen well for your cartilage to be intact so people who have deficiency in vitamin c of course the metrics will be affected so their cartilage will not be good and also vitamin d is necessary so we go to bone. So bone is specialized, dense, connective tissue. Why do we say it's specialized? The matrix has both organic and inorganic matter. Organic are the things we talked about, glycoproteins, proteoglycans. We mentioned things like chondroitin sulfate, heparin sulfate, um, glycosaminoglycans. So those are organic part of matrix in connective tissue. But bone has inorganic where you have calcium, such as calcium hydroxide, calcium apatite, and that's what makes the bone hard. So it has both organic and inorganic. So we have compact bone, the outer part of bone, and spongy bone, the inner soft part where you have the marrow. So the outer part of bone, which is compact bone, is the microscopic organization has Havasian system. So this is, is what we are going to discuss. So this is a Havasian system. There's another one here. So these are all Havasian system. So the matrix of the bone, the inorganic component has calcium phosphate, calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxy apatite and of course the matrix also has remember we say the matrix has um, ground substance okay and fiber so bone has collagen type 3 so these are the um, havasian system of compact bone remember bone compact bone on the outer part is covered by periosteum okay on the inner part it's covered by endosteum cartilage was covered by perichondrium Okay, so bone, outer, and periosteum, inner part, and osteum. So usually, Havasian system is comprised of a central Havasian canal containing neurovascular structures and concentric lamellation of collagen type 3. Okay, so all these are concentric lamellations. They go round and round and round the Havasian canal. Within the lamellations, you have 
lacuna that are hosting osteocytes. Okay, these are osteocytes. You can see the nuclei of osteocytes within lacuna. Adjacent osteocytes from one lamellation to the next, they communicate via cytoplasmic extensions. You can see this um, thread like those are um, cytoplasmic extensions that are housed in canaliculi. So they enable adjacent osteocytes to communicate. Now, these have vision canal containing neurovascular structures, and these contain neurovascular structures. They usually connect at 90 degrees via what you call Volkmann's canal. So this comes downwards, this comes downwards, and they're joined at 90 degrees by Volkmann's canal, okay? So this is a Volkmann canal going to connect to the next half Asian canal containing neurovascular structures for communication. A vision canal with neurovascular structures, concentric lamellations of collagen type 3. Within the lamellations, you have lacuna that are hosting osteocytes. Osteocytes send out cytoplasmic extensions housed in canaliculi to communicate with cytoplasmic extension of adjacent lacuna. Two adjacent avision canals communicate at 90 degrees via Volkmann's canal. So we have osteogenic cells, the cells in the bone. We start with osteoprogenitor cells. Those are the precursors, the stem cells. After the, and they are mainly found in the inner layer of the periosteum. Remember, perichondrium had outer fibrous, inner chondrogenic or inner vascular. Periosteum also has outer fibrous and inner vascular, okay? Or osteogenic to form new bone. So after osteoprogenitor cells, they mature up and become osteoblasts, and osteoblasts are the ones that form bone. They lay down oste uh, osteoid, okay? So, they, which is the matrix. So they lay down the fiber and the matrix, the osteoblast. Then the osteoblasts, after they have laid down bone, they remain in an inactive state, resting state within lacuna. And this stage, they are now called osteocytes. And we've said they have cytoplasmic extensions housed in canaliculi to aid in communication between adjacent osteocytes. Another cell in bone, we've talked of osteoprogenitor, mature to become osteoblast. They lay down bone and rest in lacuna as osteocytes. The fourth type of cell in bone are the osteoclasts. Name five features of osteoclasts. They are giant or large cells, number one. These cells are multinucleated. They have five to 15 nuclei. Number two, they have a ruffled border because they have microvilli on the apical surface. So the apical surface is ruffled. They have microvilli. Then they are housed in how ships lacuna. Their lacuna are called how ships lacuna. And lastly, they are members of the monocytic phagocytic system. Members of the monocytic phagocytic system. So they play an immune role in the in the in the bone tissue. Again. Their main function is to cause bone resorption, to break down bone. When your calcium level in blood is low, it will help to break down bone to release calcium into blood and also just to remodel and maintain the bone in general good state. So osteoclast, bone resorption. Okay, so osteoclast, giant, multinucleated, 5 to 15 nuclei, housed in Hauschip's lacuna. They are members of the monocytic phagocytic system. Apical surfaces have microvilli, so they have ruffled borders, okay? And they carry out osteoclastic activity. They destroy bone, they break down bone, they cause bone resorption because of the proteolytic enzymes within their lysosomes. So these are the different types of cells in bone. This is an osteocyte in lacuna. These are osteoblasts, very young, immature bone cell. This is an osteoclast, large cell, multinucleated, ruffled border with microvilli, okay? And then this is an osteoprogenitor, a precursor cell, stem cell. Okay, so this is how bone looks like. We've said organic matter with collagen and proteoglycans, inorganic with calcium. Again, a vision canal with neurovascular structures, concentric lamellation of collagen type 3. In between, you have osteocytes in lacunae. The osteocytes will have cytoplasmic processes housed in canaliculi to enable communication between adjacent osteocytes. One Havision canal and the neighboring Havision canal communicate at 90 degrees via Volkmann's canal. Then we have the outer part, we have the circumferential lamellae, okay? 
So you have compact bone, which is hard. We've talked about that, the outer part, and spongy bone, which is the inner. It's not hard, and it contains the marrow space. This we have discussed. Bone has periosteum, outer fibers, and inner vascular osteogenic. And the periosteum is sharply bound onto bone by what you call sharpest fiber. Compact bone is characterized by presence of haversian system. So you have a vision canal with neurovascular structures and concentric lamellation of collagen type 3. Okay, then these osteocytes are in lacunae with cytoplasmic processes that communicate and they're housed in canaliculi. The Havasian canals communicate with one another at 90 degrees via Volkmann's canal. And the outer bone, outer surface bone is covered by periosteum, inner surface is covered by endosteum. Okay, thank you.